On this week's Flame Central, a new home for the Flames and Liberty football does battle against an SEC foe. Plus, Lady Flames field hockey punches their ticket to the big dance and basketball season has begun. That includes some new threads. It starts now on Flame Central. Ooh. What a show we have for you today on the field and off. The Liberty Flames are making plays. Welcome to Flame Central. I'm Matt Warner. He's Rat McGiven. Yeah, we have an SEC showdown to get to as well as a championship to celebrate. But we begin with an eventual new home for the Liberty Athletics. Yeah, that's right. Late last week, news broke that Liberty has reached an agreement to join Conference USA beginning in the 2023-24 season. This is obviously huge news for all sports but particularly for football, who will be joining its first ever conference since making the move to the FBS. Now, realignment in college athletics is fluid, to say the least, but here's a map of the projected Conference USA membership when Liberty joins. Along with the Flames, three other new members were also added, those being current A-Sun member, that would be Jacksonville State. Also joining is New Mexico State and Sam Houston. Liberty Director of Athletics Ian McCaw put out this statement last week to Flames Nation. On behalf of Liberty University, I want to thank Commissioner Judy McLeod and the leadership of Conference USA for this exciting opportunity. Today marks a historic occasion as a Liberty University, our athletic program, and Flames Nation moves into an FBS conference for the first time. We're going to continue to train champions for Christ, provide a high quality student athlete experience, and achieve victory with integrity and thrive as a future member of Conference USA. Great news for Liberty football and the rest of Liberty Athletics. Speaking of Liberty football, they had a game to play, and it was a big one for not only LU, but head coach Hugh Freeze. Flames taking on the Ole Miss Rebels, and this would be an absolute battle. Lane Kiffin looking to lead his team to their seventh win of the season, but this game being hyped up to be a QB battle. A lot of the damage would come on the ground. Second play of the game, Ely would take it 70 yards. Nobody catching that man. Ole Miss quickly goes up. 7-0. Late stages, second quarter. Rebels up 17-0 at this point. Matt Corral would throw a strike to Jackson, who would cut back and find the end zone, putting Ole Miss up 24-0 at the half. All seems hopeless right now for Liberty Wright. Not so fast. You got to trust that coaching staff. They had some adjustments in the third quarter. LU finds their rhythm. A strike gets thrown to Kevin Shaw. That gets the chains moving. Then Shedro Lewis would follow his blocks, administer a stiff arm, and find pay dirt. Shedro Lewis, a speedster this year for the Flames, and he is getting it done against Ole Miss in the SEC. Later in the third quarter, score now 27 to 7. TJ Green would have his best run of the day to get Liberty inside the 30. Tack on a face mask penalty to the Rebels, and Liberty is awfully close. A few plays later, Willis keeps it and walks it in to make it a two score game. Despite a few promising drives late by LU, that's where the score would stay. The Flames falling on the road to Ole Miss. Their record now 7 and 3 on the season. Here's what head coach Hugh Freeze had to say about his emotional return to Oxford, Mississippi. As far as the reception from the Ole Miss people last night at the hotel in Tupelo or when we arrived or after the game or when we're walking to halftime, I just, you know, I thought they were, they were just incredibly kind. And um, that is a, uh, a, a huge, it's an answer prayer for Jill and I. Mm, just some real emotion there from Hugh Freeze and why not returning to the school where he used to coach and returning to the state in which he grew up. It was a homecoming for Freeze and in the lead up to the game, we traveled back to Mississippi ourselves to talk with his parents and learn about where Hugh Freeze's love for football found its origin. Breakfast is the most important meal because you're going to work all day long and you've got to have all the energy you can get. You gotta have bacon. You ain't, you ain't got breakfast without bacon. You know, cook kind of slow, but don't you know where you get it good and crisp without getting it real hard. You know, bunch of biscuits, bunch of everything. It didn't matter what you cooked, they ate it. He would sleep late in the mornings after they had a football game or what have you. When he would wake up and he was ready to get up and eat his breakfast, he'd bang on the wall 
so I could hear him. <laughs> and I would go and open the door and sit down on the bed and chit-chat a minute. Then he would get up and have his breakfast. Get up about four, uh, get dressed, go out, go after the cows that were all over the place, wash the cows, get the machines on them, milk. That was our morning. In here, we was milking about 125. And, you know, and it would help, I think it'd hold 19 at a time, something like that. I guess it never was a question, you know, everybody just got up and did what they had to do. I think it's just made him the way he knows that it, in order to get something done, you gotta work. And it just takes work in football and whatever you do. He didn't want to milk for the rest of his life. A lot of things like that, it caused them to realize that uh, they probably need to do something else besides farm. <laughs> well, I coached a little league and high school in football and junior high in football. And hey, I can still see those uh, black and red uniforms on the field out there. And uh, a lot of years, I know uh, we won uh, like 33 football games in three years and went to state playoff and was, went to the finals of the state. Yeah, all of those memories. A lot of years of hard work, you know, uh, and uh, a lot of young men went through here and, and done really well. And uh, at one time, there was a little practice field over here, and we were out there practicing in, 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 before they built that building. And uh, he come across and crawl up in the grass over there and watch practice uh, under the fence over there. He'd be laying up there in the grass. <laughs> he was, he, matter of fact, on this side, I know Yana, ever since he was big enough to carry a water bottle. Uh, and, uh, he, he had his little khaki pants and red shirt, and he just, just one of the managers had, had, when he was just very, very, very young. When they were smaller, on Saturday was the big football day, you know, for all of us, us family. They would put about three or four TVs, whatever they could find, and each one was on a different channel football was a big thing. I don't think he even realized that he was going to coach until he was maybe a sophomore or junior in college. He was a leader, and, and most of the kids at church, you know, looked up to him. Kids at school looked up to him. That was evident from a very young age that uh, he was a leader. I think he would want to be remembered as somebody who led many to Christ and that uh, wanted to live that kind of life and then of course he wanted to be successful in football. And I think that it will be that he was a good father, husband, son, all of it. Best legacy you could leave, I guess. Ah, great getting to spend some time with the Freeze family. Well, despite that loss down at Ole Miss, Liberty quarterback Malik Willis continues to garner national recognition. This week, it was announced that he's a semifinalist for the Davey O'Brien Award, which goes to the nation's top quarterback. Willis, one of just 20 quarterbacks now, still up for the award. The three finalists will be announced on November 23rd. To help Malik's chances, go to the Davey O'Brien Award social media accounts, and you can participate in the fan vote by liking the photo of the Flames quarterback. Well, great to see Malik a semifinalist. Well, if you're a passionate Liberty Athletics fan, then you know that the field hockey team is arguably the best team on campus, and they proved that in the Big East Championship. LU facing UConn in the Big East Tournament Championship game, and guess what? This game is actually on UConn's campus. Just so happened to be a little bit of luck for them. Early on in the game, Huskies appear to score, but the goal be called back for a third-party obstruction, or basically, what does that mean, Rhett? It's an illegal pick. Score remains 0-0 with both sides exchanging chances, and coming awfully close, the goaltenders were great in this game. Finally, Jill Bolton would create a turnover in the 42nd minute and bury it five-hole, giving Liberty a 1-0 lead. Bolton would be named tournament MVP. The Flames would hold on to that lead and claim their first ever Big East title. A sweet moment for a team that's been so close the past several years. Here's what Jill Bolton had to say about the win. It was just a hard fought game and I mean, it was tiring. They're a great team and they, we worked them hard and they worked us hard. So I think just at the end, it was just, I ran to Kendra and then I ran to the team and it was just, it was tears, tears of joy, tears of happiness. I think it was just like, 
just a lot from the past five years, just coming up short, last year not making to the championship, and just like for the clock to hit zero and Liberty to have the one and UConn to have the zero, it was just amazing. With the Big East title in hand, that means Liberty also secured a bid to the NCAA tournament, something the program had not done since 2014. They would be sent to the Rutgers Regional with a first-round matchup against St. Joseph's. It was an exciting moment for the team to experience Selection Sunday, and fortunately, we were there to cover it. We just need a chance. We need a chance. We need to be in the tournament because there's not a team in this country that wants to play you right now. Like, I promise you that much. I'm just, I'm incredibly excited. Secret weapons. Whoa! I brought a cowbell. Good evening and welcome to the 2021 Division I Field Hockey Selection Show. Let's dive into the bracket and unveil our 18-team field. And we start first with the Liberty Flames have the top offense in the country this year, scoring 73 goals. Today, the Flames won their first ever Big East Tournament title in stunning fashion. Meanwhile, St. Joseph's is back in the tournament after a brief hiatus last spring. We got this. We got this. Geniuses in there. I know them. How many? Two. Do you know your names? Get fresh. Well, guys, how many are the teams we have? Two. Two. And there you have it. All 18 teams still alive in pursuit of a Division I field hockey national championship. Don't make the moment bigger than what it is. Is it awesome that we're here? Yes. Is it cool that we won the regular season and the championship postseason? Yes. But that's a chapter in the book that God's writing, right, to get us to where we're ultimately trying to go. And that's a national championship. Uh, congrats to the girls. All right, coming up, the heartfelt story of Liberty wide receiver C.J. Daniels, and how he has helped his mother battle a serious health challenge. Plus, basketball is back, and the men have some new unis. That's when Flame Central returns. What is your dream? Your calling? What's the path to get there? It might be clear, or you might still be figuring it out. But at Liberty University, we want to empower you through every chapter of your story. Here, you can discover not just how to do things, but why to do them. And you'll have opportunities to practice and excel across different fields. And that doesn't just end at the classroom door. Your strengths and interests can also fuel your calling and they embody more than just the classes you choose. So at Liberty, you can train, perfect, find a team to call your own at every skill level. There's more to your story than just the destination. It's reinventing, discovering, finding you are not alone as you chase your dreams. And those dreams don't have to wait until someday. At Liberty, we unite through Christ to pursue things larger than ourselves, to make a difference in both our communities and world, because in Him, we are able. So, what is your calling? Liberty University can fuel that calling, and your outcome will change the world. At Liberty University, making an impact for Christ doesn't wait until you graduate. Because here, we get out there and step into our community with our sleeves rolled up. So what does that look like? Every year, our students join together to serve those in need, whether close to home or far away, and share the hope of Christ. At Liberty, you'll find meaningful opportunities to make an impact with your gifts and talents, however God has called you. Times are changing. At Liberty, we've made it our priority to grow, to learn, to improve. But even with all the change, our purpose remains. We want to equip people to go make a difference through their calling in their communities around the world. And though we are blessed with an amazing campus, our most valuable resource has always been the people, our students, and those who inspire them. It's the people who serve, maintain, support. It's you. What's really important, not the buildings, not the mountain, not the property, but the young people who use these buildings, who study in these facilities, they are important. 
No matter what the future holds, we will stay focused on our goal. And the people of Liberty University are how we will continue to carry out our mission. They are the ones who empower us to training train champions, champions for Christ. Christ. Champions for Christ. Training champions for Christ. everybody, welcome back to Flame Central. You know, there's something special about a son's love for his mom. And that's exactly what our next story is about. CJ Daniels, a star wideout for LU, has been the go-to guy for Malik Wills this season. But he's used to that. CJ has been his mom's go-to ever since he was little. In 2006, I was 18 months seizure-free. CJ, he was about three and a half years old. I had a seizure while driving. I'm, I don't want to get emotional. I had a seizure while driving. And if it wasn't for my nanny, who was on that passenger side to grab that wheel, CJ and I wouldn't be here today. That accident became a tragedy. It turned my life around. My relationship with my mom, we have a tight bond. I'm like her right hand man, I'm, I'm her caregiver. I mean, we're real tight. I was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of five. So I've been living with it for almost 40 years. I had seizures during my entire pregnancy. CJ, he's my miracle baby. He did come over two months early. He had to learn about epilepsy and seizures quite early. And that was something that made me sad for my little kids to see their mother, you know, deal with a disability like that. The first time seeing her have like an episode, like me being alone and I had to be there and watch it. When I was little, I did get nervous and scared and shocked at times, but I just have to snap out of it and say, here, this is what you need to do right now. And it was hurtful for me. I just don't want too much on them. I felt like I was a big pressure, you know, on my kids because that was a lot of weight on them to take care of me. I didn't feel like I had, I was pressured, but I felt like I, I had to do this because she's my mother and when she struggles, I struggle. So I felt like me being there for her was like the best thing I had to do. I spent a lot of time in the hospital at Emory University in Atlanta, dealing with the brain scans and the brain monitoring, just to make sure that the doctors knew the exact location of where they wanted to do the brain surgery. And just by me staying there at the hospital for so long, I met a lot of epilepsy survivors there. We all learned a lot from each other and um, that's when I just, you know, I told my father, I said, I just really feel like I need to do something to help the community because many people don't really know, they know about it, but they don't know how to connect with people and they kind of need that support. And uh, that's when I just came up with the idea to say, hey, let me start some type of organization, you know, to help people not just in Georgia, but everywhere. My name is Natalie Beavers. I use my experience to start a nonprofit charity and advocacy called Angels of Epilepsy. Seeing someone that has struggled over the years and with epilepsy and is still standing tall, is that strong to go out and help more people with the same condition. She had an idea and it is growing. She has seizure diaries in seven different countries and it's just amazing to see it grow. Now with CJ um, being an advocate, Hey, my name is CJ Daniels. I'm from Latonia, Georgia, and I'm the vice president of Angels of Epilepsy, a nonprofit charity and advocacy. Becoming VP, vice president of Angels of Epilepsy Incorporated, it just gives me hope. So this says change begins with awareness. So basically supporting AOE and together we fight because many people don't know much about uh, epilepsy. AOE has assisted many people around the world. One thing that we do is give. I wouldn't be the man I am today without my mother. I am a helpful person because of her, and I've seen her 
go out and help others and that has only made me want to go out and help others as well. Regardless of how my life may have changed quite a bit and me battling with a disability, I look back and I say, God made this happen for a reason because it was a test that turned into a testimony. And what am I doing now? I am helping someone each day that is battling this condition. Bringing happiness to a family, that's my medication. It's a great story. CJ Daniels, incredible on the field and off. Our thanks to Emily Austin for that piece. Well, with the season beginning this week for Liberty Men's Basketball, the team was told they had some media interviews they had to attend. In reality, what they got was a first look at their brand new uniforms, and we think you'll enjoy their reaction. How's it going? Yeah. Good to see you. All right. All right. Good to see you around there. On this? Yep. Actually, go ahead. Before we do this, would you walk around and open up that box? Yeah. Just speak out, man. Ooh, tough. These are crazy. Shee! <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> solid for sure. Look at these. <laughs> this is so hard, bro. Ooh. I'm pretty classic. I like the whites. Um, I, all of them are fire, though. So. Jeez. I cannot wait to wear these. <laughs> this, I think, may be my favorite. <laughs> White ones, bro. White ones are nice. I'm already picking out what shoes I'm wearing and everything. These are sweet. There we go. This is a, this is a really good idea, guys. What are we wearing uh, Thursday? Uh, some nice looking unis. All right, let's get to some highlights. Lady Flames taking on Belmont Abbey of Division II. Early on, LU getting it going in the paint. Maya Berkman unstoppable. She'd get back-to-back -back baskets that would charge a Liberty team early. Berkman would finish with 10 on the night. LU also strong from deep. Priscilla Smingy with the triple. That would go off the window. All smiles there from Smingy. Flames would score 31 in the first quarter and lead at the half 47 to 16. Crusaders would have their best quarter in the third. Joe Snow knocking down a pair of triples, but a severely undermanned Crusaders team would be no match for LU on this night. The Flames would clamp down defensively, dishing up four blocks in the second half. Follow that up with freshman sharpshooter Emma Hess finding her stroke in the fourth quarter, and it would be a blowout. Liberty wins it 89 to 40, and head coach Kerry Green collects his 400 in 96 career victory. Not a bad way to start the season right no, there. No, not at Blowout all. Blowout victory. All right, time now for Warm Hot and Fuego. Top play, player moment from yeah. the past week here at Liberty. Rhett, do we have a theme? We do. This past week is Veterans Day, so That's I right. thought I'd throw in a little bit of tidbits about Veterans Day, and we'll start off. Did you know the name has not always been Veterans Day? It no. used to be Armistice Day. I did not know that. Yeah, which oh, means you know, like yeah. the peace tree right, kind of right, deal. Right, yeah, that's right. okay. so good stuff. So warm. We're going to the ice for the first time this season. Okay. Hard to believe yeah. it's me, right? right? Matt Bartell, big number 91 on the Flames team. This is a guy the Flames needed with so many graduates and a lot of scoring leaving the program last year. They needed this guy to be big, and he has done just that. In a top five matchup in the ACHA, he had four assists, four apples mm. for the boys, and that was a big reason they were to able to come back and win in game two in the shootout and he had three assists in that game marching the flames back so Bartell a great vision I thought of him more as like a PK guy yeah. a goal scorer and uh, he has just been tremendous for this group all right from warm we go now to hot yeah. right who's your choice there it's Bridget Redstat okay yeah. I got another little fun fact Tell me. okay the reason it is on November 11th Veterans Day yeah. is because the war ended World War One yeah. on the 11th day the 11th hour of the 11th month oh, so that's you why go. you get well, November 11th yeah you know I'm yeah. trying that's to do right. my right. Bridget Redstat Stat. Yeah. Okay, she's coming into this program. Again, a lot of scoring leaving. She needs to be a, a super dynamic. senior, right? Yeah, she yeah. is. She is a super senior. She needs to be consistent and she needs to be dynamic offensively. She's probably the most dynamic offensive weapon. Maybe not the best from three and maybe not the best inside, but when it comes to all the tools all together, she's got the most offensive ability. She knocked down three triples in this game. She was huge and they're going to need her to be like that throughout the rest of the season because the schedule doesn't get easier. No. You got Ohio coming here, Virginia Tech. It's a good home schedule for the Lady Flames. All right, finally in Fuego, yeah. your top 
tidbit here and then your yeah. player. A lot of people here Remembrance Day. So yeah. Veterans Day is known as Remembrance Day in the UK and Canada. There you hey, go. A little homeschooling ah, okay. here for everybody. <laughs> Gotta love it. And Fuego, Story Jackson. In this football game, Flames, you know, they had a chance late stage of third and in the fourth quarter, and that's when he showed off. He had a quarterback hurry right there, and then he had a pair of sacks in the fourth quarter, getting to Matt Corral, giving the Flames a chance in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, it wouldn't come to fruition for LU, but Story Jackson continues to be a bright spot for LU at the linebacker position. Yeah, he has been fantastic yeah. for the Flames on that defense this year, yeah. right? Great job. Thanks. It's nice educational experience yeah, for all of us. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Still to come, we unveil this week's top Flames moment from the past 50 years and give you our Flames fantasy update. Don't go anywhere. Your future career will ask you to analyze, assess, implement, react, make smart decisions in a split second. With the Liberty University degree, you'll be ready because your first day on the equipment comes long before your first day on the job. Get ready to take on tomorrow, today. Welcome back to Flame Central. With this being the 50th year of Liberty University, we've enjoyed looking back each week at some of the top athletic moments throughout the history of the school. Yeah, and this week's moment likely involves the best individual athlete the Flames have ever had in Sam Chalanga. November 23rd, 2009. Junior Sam Chalanga broke the course record by 22 seconds to win the NCAA National Cross Country Championship with a time of 28 minutes, 41 and 3 tenths seconds. So the fans are rushing to the fence to see Sam Chalanga of Liberty University, who now senses the moment. Sam Chalanga now 100 meters from the finish. The sun has broken through the clouds and shined on Sam Chalanga, who is now a national champion. This would be Chalanga's first national title, but it would not be his last. The following year, the 10-time All-American would duplicate the effort, becoming only the 10th men's runner in NCAA history to repeat as national cross-country champion. Looked like he was running by himself. Where was everybody else? He just torched the field. That was incredible. All right, hey, before we wrap up the show, we have to give you our Flames fantasy update following the Ole Miss game. Yeah, can you feel the excitement? Yeah, from yeah everybody's really excited about yeah. this. Take a look. Of course, Rhett, Emily, Joe, Yock, and I drafted our players before the season. We score it each week. And uh, it's a runaway, but Rhett, you have. I mean, you're, you know, you're yeah, locked into second I place. I am. I feel like a winner by myself. That's you right. know, after you take you out of the That's mix, I'm right victory. there. Uh, yeah. they ha they're off this weekend, yep. so you have another week to kind of regroup, Rhett. Yeah, that's true. See if you can finish strong over the last couple of weeks. I of feel season. confident right. about that. Well, that about does it for us this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, you can go to our website, libertyflamescentral.com, watch all our past stories, and past shows. Yeah. What's, what's not to like about yeah. that? And you got to check out the Flame Central podcast as well. We had Richie on lately. That's right. Check that out. He's Rhett. I'm Matt. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.